Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Today, John and I have our special guest, Bill Jordan. Uh, just, well, he's a fun guy to talk to. And if you don't believe me, listen or nap. <laughs> Bill, it's great to see you. One of the most unique introductions I've ever been, uh, been honored with. So uh, thank you. Great to see you guys. Thanks for having me back. Uh, our pleasure. Uh, Bill, I am a big fan of you as an author, your book. Ah. Uh, and hmm. I have to tell you that um, everybody who reads this uh, loves it. It's, you know, it's short, it's simple, it's easy to pick up. You can, and you can buy a mug. <laughs> okay. I, I can are we done with, are we done with these uh, 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 product placements for now? I have to get it back to the prop room. You need to get a screen grab of that. That's okay. like magic. Yeah. That is magic. Oh, wait, I, I didn't bring my mug. Forgive me. That's okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> now that we've got that shameless plug out of the way, <laughs> um, the, the reason I brought up the book is because I know you are a, an avid reader. You love to read books. And you often recommend some. Mm -hmm. uh, so my question is, what are you reading today? Well, um, I may have mentioned this to you guys before, and it's actually prompted by this book that I will share in just a second. <clears throat> in fiction, I am reading Brad Thor novel, and in but I mainly read nonfiction. And right now, I'm reading from a stack of, I think, twelve books. Wow. That's, part of my, that's part of my morning habit, which leads me into the segue of this is one of the 12 that I'm reading from, Atomic Habits by James Clear. I think if it is not, not still business books, it's up there. I, I didn't check this morning before we, we came on, but this book, you know, you hear people throw around about you know, life-changing, game-changing kind of a book. If you are wanting to create habits or wanting to eliminate habits, this book is a blueprint on how to do that. And a case in point, I'll just, if you want, I give you one example he gives in this. Sure. Is to um, kind of like a, uh, a chain habit uh, where think about what habits you've got now or habit stacking, he calls it. You know, you make your coffee in the morning, you let your dog out. What can you tie into one of those habits that makes that habit or makes that practice into a habit in and of itself? So what I've done is I've, I've liked these books. And like I said, I don't sit there and just read from the books. Typically, like with this one, I'll read a page or two. He's got little subcategories, sub sub chapters in it. Um, so I'll go through these books. Many of them are like a uh, like a daily devotional kind of a reading. Uh, and there, but there are some other ones that are that are a little heavier than that. But I'll just read until you know a page or two, and then I put a bookmark in it, and then I get back to it. But a habit that I've developed through my reading that I wanted to and create a, a better habit of exercise, and to where now I honestly don't think about it, and that's the that's the secret of you know being a habit, right? So for every third, I read twelve books for every. Three books I read, I stop and I do an exercise. So I'll have a push day and I'll have a pull day. So I read the three top books and then I'll do 25 push ups. Then I read three more books and I'll do 25 squats. And then I read three more books and I'll do 25 or not 25, I wish I could, 15 presses. And then I'll wow. read three more books and then I'll do uh, 50 calf raises. And so and that's the, that's your new that's your new habit. Is that's, that, that's one of your yeah. exercises to your reading. Yeah, which my reading was already a habit. Mm -hmm. So by by creating this this stacking of habits, yeah. tying a habit to another habit, it has now become a habit. Huh. It, but and that's the, the that's the concept brilliant. between that's the concept behind atomic habits. That's that's one of the strategies he's got. And, and the point being of the atomic habits is not only atomic being powerful, but atomic, like Adam, is tiny. He talks yeah. about tiny changes that we can make in our lives 
that over time will build it up. So yeah. somebody could say to me, well, you know, 25 push-ups a day, that's, that's nothing. Yeah, but if I'm doing that three days a week, every month, yeah. well, then how many push-ups have I done in a year? And how many have you done? <laughs> right. So, I mean, it adds up. We're not thinking about it. So we're gradually making these improvements. The habits I've got now at night when I get up, uh, before I go to bed, I'll get the dog food set up. I mean, this is now habit to me. The, the coffee is ready to go. The dog food's ready to go. Yeah. I've got the coffee mugs out. I've got the butter and stuff out to my wife's. Uh, she likes toast and all that stuff. So I, I have all that laid out. I don't have to do that in the morning. It's just, it's little stuff. It's the atomic habits. And I cannot, yeah. I cannot recommend the book strongly enough. Well, that's a, you know, it's a great concept is because I've, you've heard the phrase that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, you know, but that's a great concept, the atomic habits and building on them and, and tying them to something that you're going to do anyway, you know, something that you've probably already made a habit. I mean, we've already got to stop and think of the habits you've got in your day. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you really stop. Think about, well, I always do this, and you do it without thinking. You get up in the morning, you go to the bathroom, you brush your teeth, you come downstairs, you let the dog out. There are other habits that you can tie to that. If you're making your cup of coffee and you're putting in your toast, and while it's toasting, maybe that's when you read a little page from a daily devotional. Maybe that's when you do some kind of exercise. Maybe yeah. I mean, and it just builds to where you're maximizing your time without being, you know, kind of crazy or so ra ra rather than say i'm going to um um start an exercise program all you've really done is you say in my daily stuff that i'm doing anyway my normal habits i'm going to add a little incremental something yeah. so that it's not a big yeah, thing well, that i've got it's not it's not like uh making a not. resolution and 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 then because it's too big a thing you have to abandon it or you right. You wind up abandoning it because you you took on too much. Well, here here's the point he makes in the book too. You know everybody. You know winners and losers. Don't want to you know losers. You know first place and second place, both have goals. They both have goals of wanting to win. Which though has the process? Which one focuses on more of the process than of the goal? Yeah. We also know if I want to lose twenty pounds. Okay. Well. How often do you weigh? Yeah. So I've done the intermittent fasting. That has also become a habit. That's one of the things when I first get up in the morning. I get up in the morning, I go to the bathroom, I turn on my phone. On the phone is an app for a set of scales my wife gave me or gave us for Christmas. Second thing I do in the morning after I go to the bathroom is I get on the scale. And it shoots it to my phone so I don't forget my weight by the time I get down. And then I record that. I write that down. And I know if I'm gaining weight or losing weight. And I have where I want to be, not a specific weight I want to be, but I have a weight I definitely want to be under. Yeah. And by doing that, I've, you know, it lets me track it. Hey, if I'm over that, you know, well, I'll just tell you, I don't want to be over 180 anymore. Well, I still am over 180 at times, but if I hit 181.2 pounds, I know that maybe I need to up my intermittent fasting that day. That's another beauty of intermittent fasting. You can do more of it. If you're going keto or something like that, you really can't do more keto. With intermittent fasting, you can do more or less as you adjust. Yeah. Sorry, I think about a yeah. lot of stuff. <laughs> no, Bill, I I like I'm gonna have to get this book. I, I think it's a, a great concept. Um and it sounds like a very easy way to incorporate changes. If you will stick to it, and he makes a great point too, you know, we've always heard it's sort of a cliche. It takes 21 days to establish a habit. Yeah. No, no 21 days has nothing to do with it. If you do it once a day for 21 days, you may or may not do it. It's the repetitions right. more importantly than the days. Yeah. Right. Because if you do something once in 21 days, you ain't got a new habit. It's nothing about the time. It's the frequency. It's the yeah. how often do you do that. Hmm. Now, I have to uh, change the subject just a little bit. 
you said that you read three books and then do some exercises. Now, I assume that when you say your readings are devotional type readings, you're talking about short blurbs, a page at a time, that kind of thing. You're not reading three three chapters no, no, no. of three books. Well, so, so here's an example. So here's Anatomic Habits. And you can see where I have yellow highlighted. So he, he's got this section right here. And it'll probably continue to the next page. So yeah. I'll read that section. I got gotcha. you. Or if I just want to read a page. Maybe yeah. I read the left-hand page and the next day I read the right-hand page. But I'm getting that information in. And then I go on to the next book. Yeah. And then I try to rotate as far as the exercises, and I may not do those exercises every day. At my age, I know I can, I don't want to say overtrain, but I can overstrain yeah. myself. Yeah. So, so, it's when, when, so Bill, when do you have time? Because you are constantly, uh, and we have conversations that extend far beyond on the air, because we just enjoy stuff, talking about stuff. But you talk about Aristotle and Plato. How do you get all those those folks in. What is the habit that allows you to reach such a wide diversity of uh, uh, subject matter? Well, I mean, they're in, they're they're part of those books. Uh, the Daily Stoic is one of those by Ryan mm. Holiday that I think we talked about before, sure. and he's one of the ones that every day he's got a a different type of Stoic uh, practice. He's also got a new book coming out, I think. Well, in the next month or two, and I've already ordered it and ordered a copy for my daughter because she likes that stuff too. And that's one of those ones that I'll read a chunk of, you know, every day and maybe even rotate it a couple of times through the uh, through the year. Now, for example, uh, now Daily Stoic, I think I'm going to read for the rest of my life. You know, every yeah. day. Uh, and Atomic Habits. This is probably the third time I've gone through it because there's more to it than just habit stacking. There's other ways. And he's also got ways to eliminate habits that we do. Oh, that's good. And that, that's. That's a pretty cool practice too, because we all have those too. Yeah. Well, well you know, wait, speaking of, how do I have the time? Is next to my chair in the morning, I've got a stack of twelve books. <laughs> <laughs> and when I drink my coffee in the morning, I'll typically start with a little music or something. I'll play some kind of laid back, probably some seventies or sixties, seventies or eighties music. And I'll take my blood pressure just out of habit. That is a habit. Mm -hmm. In addition yeah. to my weight, so I'll write down the date, my weight my blood pressure and pulse every day. And this goes back, that goes back probably a couple of years. Yeah. Well, Bill, um, speaking of books that are easy to read in short bites and have uh, sections that you can pick up and move on, put down and move on to the next day, I yeah. recommend this book, which is The 15 Practices from Bill Jordan. You mean this book? Yeah. You know, and you, know, you can see it's not a very thick book, but it's very powerful. Great ideas in this book. Yeah, kind of like, like Atomic Habits. It's but what I'd like to do, gentlemen, if I could, though, is show you a habit that I've grown accustomed to doing uh, every day. Because uh, every day, I one of my habits is to raise my cup and to embrace the boom. Well, thank you. I, I'm I'm going to have to go get my cup, so I'll raise my book instead. Guys, okay. I appreciate the time. And just a quick reminder: uh, live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. I'm talking to baby boomers primarily. Thanks, guys. See you soon, Bill. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.